Hello friends, followers and dear flight simulators. Welcome back to Microsoft Flight Simulator. I was initially planning to record the the last helicopter I had in mind um, in a tutorial video, which was the UH-1 Huey, but a recent release from Fly-by-Wire team made me change my mind. As you see in the background, we are with the fly-by-wire A320 and there is a much weighted expected function just released into the experimental build of their um, A320NX or A32NX which is the VNAV. Uh, VNAV actually is a Boeing terminology that stands for Vertical Navigation and in Airbus language it's managed climb and managed descent and we will take a look at that uh, on a full flight from Stansted in Lord London to uh, Glasgow so we are in Ryanair colors today and this is a real world flight and we will be uh, departing from runway 04 in Stansted and landing to runway 05 using ILS uh, at our destination Glasgow. Let's jump into the cockpit and let's discuss couple things before even we depart. Right now the aircraft is configured for flight planning and boarding is completed. All the performance figures are entered and everything else is ready to go. We need to start the APU and pushback but before doing so I wanted to discuss what the experimental build is bringing in terms of uh, managed climb and descent, in other words, VNAV. There is some new symbology that we need to discuss on the ND and I'll, I will try to explain as much as I possibly can with my current knowledge and I'm still trying to find some information and read on this symbology to uh, make sure I'm passing the right information. So. Uh, bear with me on that and maybe join or watch a couple other videos that I will record in the future with the A320 and we might as well use this aircraft again on a world tour live stream over the weekends and if you join us on during that live stream you get to see also uh, and learn maybe just a little bit more Alright, so as I said, our flight plan is ready. We are departing from uh, 04 in Stansted using UTAV 1 Sierra departure. And our departure, if we take a look in Navigraph and bring up the chart, hopefully it will load, has some restrictions. As you see, we are departing runway 04 and then we have a between this restriction for three to five thousand and then a, s a restriction of five thousand at Parkway and then Utawa and then from there we can climb to our f cruising altitude of 36,000 feet so what this means in terms of vertical navigation or managed climb uh, in the Airbus language so right now if you turn the constraints on the aircraft will display the exact same constraints although the range is a little bit low to see the others but if I extend the range to 20 you will see that 5000 and 3000 plus restriction is depicted on our uh, ND and also you see a magenta arrow here that magenta arrow tells us where the aircraft thinks it will level off right now our altitude is not set but if I go ahead and bring it up as you see that changed to blue now and the aircraft thinks it will reach 3000 right after departure um, the, the color difference between magenta and blue is blue refers to selected which means the pilot is selecting what altitude they, uh, he wants to fly and the aircraft is telling the pilot where it thinks it will reach that selected altitude. If it's magenta, then the aircraft is calculating based on the vertical profile and a managed uh, climb. And 
telling you where it is going to level off so right now it's still blue because we haven't breached that altitude restriction with our um, main control panel setting or MCP setting so if I move this up to 6 you see that arrow changed to a magenta color which means the aircraft is now telling us that this is based on the managed mode and it is thinking that it will level off at this point on our flight plan and it will not do anything else until we clear this restriction let me increase the range and increase the altitude to show you some other symbology here this blue arrows you see on the ND uh, which is like you know on either side of the flight plan path is telling us that this is where the aircraft will start climbing again and this is where it thinks it will reach the selected altitude so which means if I keep increasing the altitude that second blue arrow should uh, go to a further distance and we are no longer seeing it but if we go to a higher range you'll see that it changed its position uh, a little bit further also the magenta dot you see here is the speed change marker which tells us where the aircraft calculated that it will start accelerating to a different speed in this case I think the aircraft is thinking that by the looks of it it will reach 10,000 and then start increasing or accelerating to the uh, 280 knots of climb speed or 310 I believe or whatever it is we will see it when we take off and this is telling us this is where I'm going to start accelerating from 250 knots let's increase more to see if we can display some other symbology which we can't and the, the magenta circles are basically coming from this constraints button here if I turn it off uh, it is telling that you have constraints on those waypoints and if you want to see what those are you have to turn this on if you don't it doesn't give you a number but it gives you a symbology saying there is something restricting the uh, flight management computer or in Airbus language um, multifunction control and display unit MACDU telling us that it is restricted on these waypoints and uh, it will be affecting our uh, vertical profile so that's was the, what the symbology is when we start flying our departure if some uh, more symbology comes up I'll try to explain those but wanted to put that in there uh, before we even started uh, leaving the gate also all those restrictions are uh, displayed on our um, flight plan routing on their flight plan page in our Mach 2 and it's showing 5240 and I think if I read it correctly there is currently a bug that causes some issues with the VNAV uh, between standard and uh, local barometric pressure so when you pass the transition altitude and go to standard uh, the calculation seems to be off and that is uh, why I believe this is not exactly 5000 or there might be some other thing that's causing that but usually if this was uh, properly uh, bugged out and if all the bugs are cleaned you should see 5000 here and all the restrictions should be displayed uh, respectively as displayed on your chart and then going down it's all our flight plan routing and the vertical profile and where the aircraft thinks it will uh, be at at those waypoints and then the top of climb, climb is also displayed here you will also see a top of descent marker when we are up in the air right now the aircraft doesn't know our climb performance and therefore we won't be able to see a top of climb marker I believe on the ND we can quickly check though let me just minimize this and take a look at it with a greater range to see if we can spot a top of climb marker but 
I doubt that it will be there uh, due to not being up in the air. What it looks like is though it's same symbology like the blue arrow, uh, but it is actually, hold on, let's do this and drop the altitude down a little bit to see the other blue arrow. It will most likely look like this blue magenta, uh, this blue arrow, and it will be white in color that tells you that this is where the aircraft thinks it will reach top of climb and reach cruising altitude. And the other one is the top of descent marker, which will look like this arrow, and it will be again white in color, but this time it is telling us where it thinks it will be. St we should start descending to stay on vertical profile and reach our. Uh, selected altitude to safely finish our arrival and execute our approach. All these will depend on the, the figures and the programming you do in, in the MCDU. So up until now, I think uh, my me personally was not paying too much attention to the restrictions. I tried to keep an eye on them, but you know, without having this uh, functionality, uh, I I usually skip through those and didn't worry too much but going forward for proper flight simulation that's close to real life uh, even you are a March virtual pilot you should be respecting those altitude restrictions they are there for some reason and especially on wet sim and other online flying networks if you are flying and if uh, ATC is not giving you further instructions and you are sticking to your SID you should respect these altitude restrictions because it will be monitored by the ATC. The other changes here are under our init page. Now we have the option to enter the wind information. This is important to have an accurate calculation of top of climb, top of descent, because wind is also affecting the aircraft's performance, whether it's a headwind, tailwind, crosswind, whatsoever. So this is important to know and make entries and you have a couple options here climb wind next page can I go next page or next phase uh, cruise wind and then descent wind I think descent is the most important but uh, if you can I recommend filling this out and the information here is um, if we go to the previous phase and go back to climb where do you find this information? It is usually in your simply flight plan at the bottom of the page. So if I scroll and find the information, there it is. So it's right after your routing information at close to the bottom of the page and it gives you the climb wind information for different flight levels, top of climb, uh, the waypoints that you have in your flight plan, top of descent and descent information. So what you can do here is because our climb we can put the flight level 100, 200 and then 350 I think that should be enough. So 100, 245, F02 knots and I will put this on a different screen so that I'm not going back and forth uh, but just wanted to show you guys where you can find this information if you want to enter it for your uh, flight 2. <coughs> Excuse me. So how to how do you enter it? First is the uh, flight level, and two forty-five at zero two. Oh, I'm sorry. And this is the order: bearing, wind information, and the altitude. So it the formatting is um, two four five. So winds are coming from 245 at the 2 knots, pretty calm. And we will see if we have to put the leading zeros. And then the altitude is flight level 100. And as you see, it's now captured that wind information. The next one on our climb is flight level 200. 0.29 at 9 knots, so 0.29er at 0.9 knots at flight level 200 and it should capture it too and then the last one I will enter is flight level 350 and you can enter as many as you want, I'm just trying to make it a little bit simple and shorten the video time 2.9er 4 at 3 knots 
and as you see I'm cha changing the formatting to see if it will accept all the formatting I have and looks like so far it did if it accepts this so you can enter it any way you like which which makes me feel like yeah uh, good job to the fly-by-wire team for uh, making this accept any formatting you put in there next phase is the cruise and we know we will be cruising at flight level 360 and uh, that's our cruising altitude so for that we will take a look at the top of descent top of climb and top of descent and try to see what it looks like at flight level 360 and to be fair I will probably enter the top of climb and top of descent and be done with it so for top of climb it's 330 at 4 knots at flight level 360 and then top of descent it is 330 at 18 knots so 330 at 0 018 again at flight level 360 that is the cruise and then the next phase is the descent for descent i will still do the same thing and take flight level 350 first it's 334 at 19 knots at flight level 350 and then flight level 200 it's 275 at 14 knots flight level 200 and finally the flight level 100 is 267 at 0 13 knots to oops 267 at 0 13 at flight level 100 and it should do alternate wind you can also use this to enter that so um, again it's saying flight level 100 so what we can do here is enter the same information or enter an alternate information for 100 using the uh, altitudes on our wind information or you can enter the alternate or general wind information I'm sorry I'm trying to zoom in and the simulator zooms in as well I have to click to that window so average wind information you can enter too um, so not sure which one is true and how this is used so don't quote me on that but I'm gonna plug in the flight level 100 here again because it's displayed down below so that's 267 at 13 knots and this should do it so now all the wind information is entered and we should have an accurate calculation of top of climb and top of descent if we go to the fly plan mode I'm not sure if it's going to display that information to us when we are not up in the air or it might be waiting for us to start our climb to calculate where it thinks we will be at that altitude based on our climb performance and um, and the speed and everything else so right now I'm not seeing oh actually I am so if I drop the range and go a couple more waypoints so as you see um, this I believe is the top of a uh, descent marker because the arrow should touch the tip of the arrow should touch the flight plan path if it was top of climb and this is basically saying I'm going down and I'm going up uh, if it's vice versa or I'm going to be at that altitude here we will take a look at that symbology when we are up in the air but that's what I know about it so let's go back and right now what I will do is instead of making you guys wait and watch I will push back taxi to the runway and I will bring you guys back when we are ready to depart see you in a little bit Welcome back friends, we are currently line up, lined up at runway 04 and ready to do our takeoff roll. So let's jump into the cockpit and do a final check of our configuration. We are set for 10,000, 
and as we discussed the aircraft should level off at 5000 and then keep climbing when we reach that blue arrow that we discussed transponder is on spoilers are armed ignition is at continuous ignition during takeoff flaps are set cabin is advised and we are ready to do our takeoff roll let's increase the throttle and wait for the engines to stabilize around 40 percent we are applying some forward pressure on the stick and we will increase the throttle to flex temperature setting that I have set which is 55 there we go actually no that's not that one it's going to toga speed we are already reached okay there we go our takeoff speed push back on pull back on the stick and off we go positive rate gear is now coming up and we will follow the flight director to a 15 degree pitch and we are waiting for the thrust reduction altitude to pull the throttles back to climb detent and from there we will clean the flaps and engage the autopilot and see what the managed climb will do or in other words what we now will do to keep us on our flight route as you see the lever climb is flashing that means we passed the thrust reduction altitude coming back on the throttles to the climb detent and passing 2500 feet we will engage the autopilot aircraft will pitch down to accelerate and we will clean up the aircraft and bring the flaps in when we reach the clean flap speed of 200 knots and if we get a little bit closer we should see the aircraft leveling off at 5000 quite hazy at Stansted, Stansted now uh, hopefully the weather will clear up a little bit passing 200 knots the flaps are now coming in and the rest is on our autopilot to keep us on profile in the meantime we can clean the aircraft disarm the spoilers ignition goes back to normal and we will worry about the landing lights when we reach to 10,000 and the aircraft should stop at 250 knots and altitude constraint is as you see displayed here we are at 5000 so uh, and the climb is armed so when we reach the blue arrow that we have seen before uh, the armed climb will engage and the aircraft will start climbing again so we will wait for that and we will see the aircraft keeping climbing and from there I'll probably um, cut the video and meet you guys at cruise see we are maintaining 5000 and that is going to happen until we reach this blue arrow of at Utawa and the magenta we will see the aircraft accelerating that's where it thinks it will reach 10,000 and start accelerating to uh, to the climb speed about 10,000 feet so let's monitor for now it's gonna be a while not too much though uh, it should be in about 10 nautical miles I believe or maybe 20, 15 or 20 we'll see I haven't checked the MCDU for the distances but um, 3 miles and then 6 so that's after 9 10 miles we should see the aircraft climbing uh, after clearing that restriction getting close to the ND to see a little bit better and we are about to reach um, Bravo Kilo Yankee there we go this is this is better and we should see the aircraft climbing when we reach Utawa and looks like so far uh, the speed is maintained, the altitude is maintained, so well done fly-by-wire group or developers, this is like working. And there is a bug that I have to discuss, maybe I told it in the first section of the video. When you switch to standard, uh, this messes up the altitude restriction calculation, so I think they will sort it out. This is just the initial release in the experimental build. Just expect this to get better in time and it will eventually merge into the development version and then will be a part of a stable release in the future but so far this was a very uh, 
important update for the fly-by-wire mod and this was long waited by a lot of flight simmers so I think it's great to see that progress and a functioning managed climb and managed descent in the Airbus A320 anyway about to reach our waypoint where the aircraft will start climbing again in about 1.5 miles we will see the climb becoming active from armed blue memes armed and it will start climbing again couple more seconds and you will see it happening there we go now the climb is engaged and altitude is armed because when we reach 10,000 the aircraft will level off and this blue arrow is showing where the aircraft thinks it will reach 10,000 so we're climbing now uh, very rapidly and we'll see if we can make it up to 10,000 uh, right at that blue arrow to see if the calculation is correct super fast climb though 4,000 feet per minute to I'm not sure if this is like actually we are pitching 12 degrees so I think it's fine for passenger uh, comfort so the Q&A started flashing we need to go to standard and hopefully it will not mess things up but it changed the position of the arrow as we pulled the uh, the borrow knob to go back to standard setting so keep in mind switching between standard and local barometric pressure has a bug that affects the performance of and the calculation of the managed climb and descent and looks like spot on the aircraft will reach 10,000 right at the blue arrow that it thinks it will so that blue arrow disappeared because now altitude is engaged and the aircraft will maintain 10,000 until we command it to climb further. So let's set ourselves to flight level 360 which is our cruising altitude and click up to engage managed climb and the aircraft will start climbing again. We are passing 10,000 so the lights should come off now turn all the landing lights and runway turn off lights and we can now turn the seat belt signs off to relieve the passengers now as you see the aircraft started accelerating passing that magenta dot and going up to 290 knots for the rest of the climb and again one more time the altitude is armed and flight level 360 is displayed on the PFD telling us that the aircraft is targeting 36,000 and it will level off at that altitude. So far so good. I think this is a great addition to the fly-by-wire mod and this will uh, improve over time and become very very important for most of us who was craving for a working VNAV in the Airbus A320. I think you have seen everything you could have uh, up until this point of or this stage of flight so no need to make you wait here I will cut the video here and meet you guys at the uh, top of client marker and then we'll sh briefly talk about it and then cut the video until the descent happens meet you at the top of climb in a little bit welcome back friends we are about to reach our top of descent or top of climb I'm sorry and as you see on the ND we have the blue arrow pointing the top of climb which disappears and come back comes back it's sort of I guess a bug and we have the magenta dot here which tells us that there will be a change in the aircraft's speed when we reach to that point we are passing 35,000, 1,000 to go and we will be at our cruise level uh, at that magenta arrow, uh, I'm sorry, blue arrow and magenta dot. We will wait until we reach there and as you see here, because this is a short flight, we have the top of descent marker right in about 15, 17 miles. So we will be descending 
in about 17 miles after reaching top of climb which means we should set the altitude for that to happen and we should also enter the destination data uh, under the performance page uh, for the approach so QNH as you see I have printed the meta information QNH at uh, Glasgow is 1029er and then the temperature by the way we, we reached top of climb and top of descent is coming very fast the winds are 190 zero at 0 01 knots so 190 zero, zero 01 and the temperature is 2 degrees Celsius so we will plug it in there Captain is making his cruise announcement as part of the experimental build and our altitude that we need to descend down to is um, 2400 so we will set that and leave it like that and if I press up now the aircraft will start descending I'm not gonna do it now but I have to show it in a different video if you start descending early you will see a green magenta a blue or green dot here which is uh, known as yo-yo so that is your vertical profile indicator uh, like a glide slope indicator it will move up and down on your altitude tape so if you are below or if the green dot is above your current altitude that means you are below your profile and if it's below your altitude that means you are above your uh, calculated vertical profile by the managed descent and or VNAV in other words <coughs> so let's see if the aircraft will initiate the descent passing the top of descent marker which is almost right now and as you see that's the green dot I was talking about now we need to activate and engage the descent so now as you see we are above the profile that dot keeps going down the altitude tape but the uh, aircraft started the descent and it will catch back to that uh, green dot this uh, zigzag blue arrow is telling us where the aircraft thinks we will get back on the vertical profile so this is an indication of that and it is uh, good to know that this is uh, also calculated also um, looks like we have another restriction at 26,000 or at least the aircraft thinks about that let me take a look at the barometric uh, minimum for our arrival and that is going to be 194 we will plug that in there 2 and that will complete our uh, approach information alright we are trying to get back on profile but we are not able to do so because of our descent rate being uh, less than what we need to get back on our vertical profile to compensate for that we can help the aircraft by adding some speed brakes and increasing our descent rate which will eventually help us get back on profile so I'm extending the speed brakes as you see and the aircraft should uh, descend a little bit faster and get back on that profile there it is so it is in about 20 miles the aircraft thinks that it will get back on profile but it keeps changing so uh, I'm not sure if it's recalculating or if it's a bug because I am not seeing it anymore and the green dot is disappeared as well so not sure why we are not seeing it but as I said this is just the initial build and expect some um, some unexpected behavior from WNAV but all in all I think it's it's working as it's intended to work therefore we are not gonna stress about that but that's that's what it is um, still going to keep the speed brakes in for the aircraft to s descend a little bit 
faster I started to see the green dot again slightly down there yep and there is a speed change here uh, with that magenta dot it's telling that it is going to change the speed though I'm not seeing any restriction but the aircraft thinks that it is going to slow down to 250 knots at flight level 254 or 25,400 hopefully we'll get back on profile uh, even though if we don't we have a restriction on our arrival and there is a there is the 260 restriction so we will see how it plays out and if we take a look at our star our star has some restrictions too and the aircraft should respect those restrictions uh, accordingly so that's our star if we take a look at the chart we are here about to enter our star and there is 200 2000 26000 there is 20000 and then we have a 7000 restriction and some speed restrictions as well which will be uh, also displayed on the ND uh, with with magenta arrows I believe we will see that when we get to that waypoint with the restriction okay we are coming down and the aircraft is not descending as fast so I can bring the flaps oh, speed brakes in because it is going to level off at 26,000 and then we'll start descending again um, passing that waypoint with the restriction so right now um, we passed all these waypoints so we are traveling towards Nelsa and interestingly enough oh that's the, the, the next I think top of descent or I'm not sure uh, if I misunderstood that arrow on the screen maybe we started our descent a little bit early um, I have to I have to do this again because this is my uh, initial flight after it's released so I will correct myself in a future video if that was a mistake and I apologize if it was if it was just bear with me we'll see I'm not sure why it's thinking top of descent is here I really don't understand although it was a little bit interesting to have top of descent that fast because we still have a long way to go towards our destination but anyway there is another top of descent marker after our current altitude and the aircraft shouldn't descend below 260 uh, until we pass ASLIP Alright, just monitoring the operation here and expecting aircraft to do what it's programmed for. The other thing I have to tell is these two magenta dashes or lines below and above the set speed, um, those are the, the range that the aircraft will operate between in other words what that means is um, if your speed is below the set uh, speed uh, it will use that speed uh, limits in between those magenta uh, lines to slow down or accelerate to stay on the vertical profile that's that's what they are telling us and it's giving aircraft a little bit more flexibility to be able to play with the speed to stay on the profile uh, if the set speed is not enough to maintain the uh, vertical profile of the managed climb and managed descent I keep saying managed climb, managed, managed descent because that's the Airbus terminology and I'm not sure we ha why we had a 250 restriction and then uh, back to 290 at this flight level that might be a nav data problem but the aircraft is following that even if it doesn't make 
a whole lot sense so now again reaching the the top of descent marker one more time so I don't know if this is the real one this could be and maybe we started our descent early but that will help us get back on the vertical profile hopefully it is uh, it is something positive for us even if it was a mistake all right just a little bit more and we will see what aircraft will do when reaching that uh, marker it shouldn't start descending again and it should be managed like you see the dot here and altitude constraint is armed and uh, active and descent is armed so clearing that restriction the aircraft should start descending again so looks like I made a mistake um, for the top of descent marker and it was indeed this next one that we just passed uh, instead of the one that I thought this is where we should start our descent I should have sus suspected because the aircraft didn't start descending but I also thought this is an experimental build so it is known to have bugs and that's maybe why but as you see the green dot here is now telling us that we are um, below the vertical profile and as we keep going towards the restriction it should close the distance and uh, come back right now I think the difference it's telling us that there is uh, 7600 difference between the vertical profile and our altitude but it should get back and not sure the speed is jumping between 250 and 290 as you see now we have some speed restrictions to slow down obviously uh, and that is not looking right if you ask me three flight level 38 376 it keeps changing so these uh, this weird behavior could be due to the um, experimental build and I'm pretty sure those bugs will be sorted out in the near future by the developers of the fly-by-wire team right now we are maintaining 26,000 and we have we have a long way to go until we clear that restriction though uh, it is almost at 40 miles away so let me cut the video I don't want you guys to wait and we will come back when we are close welcome back we are almost at the waypoint to clear the restriction of 26,000 feet uh, in about 8 miles we will reach there and the aircraft should start descending again and after that we have a 200 flight level 200 restriction in front of us and I think from there it's 7000 and then we will be on our, on our approach into Glasgow I will just record until we start the descent to talk about everything and the the yo-yo if we end up seeing it after the descent starts and cut the video until uh, we clear that 7000 restriction and ready to do our approach I think you have seen a lot of videos from me from other content creators on how to do the arrival and approach so I'm not gonna cover any of that in this video and while I was monitoring the speed kept jumping up and down and I think that's related to not uh, catching the top of descent correctly so if you end up flying the same route which I will post in the description let me know in the comments how it goes for you if you wait for that second top of descent marker to start your descent and maybe that's why the speed was jumping up and down between 290 and 250 so you see now we started the descent again and we started to see the magenta lines that tells us the aircraft might fluctuate between these different speeds to maintain the um, the vertical profile as the blue arrow with zigzag started the show again which is telling us that this is where we will meet with the profile hopefully we will because it's not disappearing this time it's getting closer and hopefully we will be back on profile and as you see this number keeps uh, 
keeps decreasing as we get closer and the aircraft as we expected is moving between this uh, range to maintain or get to the um, vertical profile you can also always help with speed brakes to help the aircraft get back to the profile and hopefully it will and it shouldn't go beyond this 260 magenta line the other throttles should take care of it and keep the speed between those two magenta lines if it's not matching the set speed <coughs> coming close I'm waiting to see the green dot and I will be cutting the video there so it's just a little bit more before we reach that and looks like we are going to be at 20,000 way before than we anticipated so as you see the aircraft is maintaining and not passing beyond that magenta line and trying to keep the speed there so that we can get back on profile all right i think it's 800 feet below us right now according to the numbers i see here and it should start climbing up very shortly and there we go the green dot started climbing up and we should now uh, get back on profile and the aircraft should keep it at the center it's shallowing the descent we can bring the speed brakes in and the green dot magically disappeared somewhere so it's now above us because of that restriction in front of us I hope these calculations and the movement of the yo-yo will be sorted out with future releases and bug fixes but I'm gonna cut the video here and meet you guys when we are ready to pass the 7000 restriction in front of us which is in about uh, it's right there Lanek that's the last waypoint of our star and it's in about 45 miles I would say see you in a little bit guys welcome back friends we are at the terminal area and almost at our final fix so passing the uh, the waypoint to make the left turn into the runway and we are at the clean dot speed we will start introducing flaps and going flaps one at this point to get ready for our uh, our landing or approach and the aircraft is turning we can now activate the approach mode and go to land landing system and turn the landing system on here too and here too this will display the glide slope and the localizer and we will arm the spoilers ignition goes back to continuous we will inform or advise the cabin and the rest will be sorted as we make uh, way into the runway we'll go flaps 2 and we are just checking the distance to the runway I'll go back and forth between arc and the landing system but final fix is there so we will wait until the final fix to drop the landing gear and go last two levels of flaps so right now we are three miles away from the final fix and the aircraft seems to be okay It is trying to get back on the localizer and capture the localizer glide slope and localizer is armed but not captured yet all right we are almost there and we should see the aircraft making a right turn to capture the localizer there is the runway in front of us so we are seeing it we are waiting for <coughs> 8 miles to drop the landing gear and we will go back to the landing system when that happens we should see the localizer diamond slowly coming to the middle as we get close to the final fix and that should be the only thing we need to worry about so right now aircraft is maintaining 140 knots and our approach speed 
if you go to the performance page is um, we approach 126 knots so we will we will monitor that on the speed tape and the localizer and glide slope started to come down we are almost at our final fix and we are just passing the final fix 7.2 miles will drop the landing gear and waiting to capture the glide slope to go flaps full we'll go flaps 3 at this point and the aircraft should capture the glide slope any moment now localizer is captured as you see on the FMA and we are waiting for the glide slope glide slope is captured we'll go flaps full and the rest is just monitoring so it's pretty cloudy I'm not seeing the runway yet so we will maintain the autopilot and keep it on until we have a visual and then we will disconnect the autopilot and land the aircraft we are fully configured nicely on the glide slope approaching the runway everything looks fine just trying to get a visual confirmation of the runway still no sign of the runway but we keep descending and uh, we will we will keep looking to see the runway and the puppy lights still nothing uh, very hazy so I think it's it's expected to not to have a better um, visual range but hopefully we will see it when we get a little bit closer or this cloud layer might be all the way to the ground so we'll see we might activate and do an auto landing if that's the case 1, passing 1000 still no sign of the runway we will wait until our minimums or this is a go around we cannot confirm the runway visually Just looking at the distance to see if I can spot the runway, but still nothing. Or not sure, but this is pretty, um, pretty bad uh, visual range. But I think I started to see the runway lights right there, at least the start of it. So that's that's a good sign. I will wait a little bit more, checking the wind information. Winds are supposed to be calm so I'm not seeing anything and we will disconnect the autopilot at this point and it is our plane now and we will keep going like this and hopefully we will we will be able to land no problem approaching nicely looks like we are drifting to the right a little bit so correcting that and 100 checked 200 we are a little bit low, just pull back, get back on profile, Minimum. continue. And still off to the right a little bit, and still 100. high. So let's get down, cut 50, the throttles. 40, 30, 20, 10, and 5. Touch down, a little bit floaty, but not too bad. Maintain the center line, reversers are engaged and slowing down. And what we didn't do is we didn't set the auto brakes, but I think we are fine with reversers. So the aircraft should start braking now and we will vacate the runway from the end. So we will roll until the end of the runway reversers should be off now and we will use this exit to vacate the runway we'll track the flaps and add some throttle and while we are here we can fire up the APU tap the brakes to disengage the auto brakes that's something I'm trying to get used to and we will vacate the runway from here There 
we go. So while we are doing this, we will clean up the aircraft when we make the turn. It's a sharp turn to be honest. But we are out of the runway safely. And I'm trying to control the tiller also do the things that I'm supposed to be doing. Landing lights are coming off, strobe is coming off, maintaining the taxiway as much as I can. It's, it's not easy though. While trying to do other things, predict the wind shear can come off, whether radar can come off, and the rest we will sort out. Uh, spoilers are already in, we can disarm those. Ignition go back to normal, spoilers disarmed, and we are going towards the terminal. Uh, at this point, taxi lights are on, runway turn, turn off lights can come on now, and we'll just take a look at our transponder and we'll go back to standby. And that's about it. So now constraints some landing system can come off, we can go back to ARC and turn off the flight director and we will just go to the terminal and find the parking spot to park the aircraft. Alright guys, welcome to Glasgow. I hope this was an informative uh, video to see the uh, VNAV, in other words, managed climb and managed descent in action. Um, Appreciate your support so far, so consider giving a like to the video if you enjoyed what you have seen. And if you stumbled upon this video and not a subscriber to the channel, uh, please hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, and you'll get notified for the future videos, and that helps tremendously uh, to the channel and fuels me to keep going and tells me that I am on the right track. So, appreciate all of you, and thanks for. Uh, taking time to watch my video we will just take this left turn and find some parking spot in front of us right there this might not be the correct spot to park an Airbus but well looks like the GA parking area but we will just stop here somewhere and park the aircraft or we will just swing around and do something but I'm gonna park here not worry about that too much still not happy with the ground services and the guidance of Microsoft Flight Simulator so that's part of the reason why we are not able to find a great parking spot but we will just poorly park here and call it a day. The intention of the video was to uh, talk about the VNAV landing lights are not coming on, runway turn off lights are coming off, taxi lights are coming off and the APU is on, we can turn the APU bleed on and we can shut down our engines now because we are on APU power and that is the end of the video guys again, thanks for watching the video and thanks for being here and I will be seeing you in the next video